Welcome back to Three Minute Theology. This is the second installment in our series on the nature of God. Today I'm standing in front of the observatory at Mount Wilson near Pasadena, California. It was here in 1929 that Edwin Hubble first discovered that the universe is expanding. And from that knowledge, scientists began to put together the theory of the Big Bang. This discovery absolutely rocked the scientific world. Up to that time, Time, scientists all over the world believed that the universe had existed in an eternal state. In other words, what we saw of the universe had way, was the way that it had always been. And this brought an end to that prevailing scientific theory. But it didn't surprise theologians. In fact, from the very beginning, theologians had been saying what, what the scientists were just now discovering was that the universe had a definite beginning. Last week, we talked about Thomas Aquinas and how he argued that everything that has a beginning must have a cause, and that uh, that cause must itself ultimately go back to having an uncaused cause. Today, I want to explore that idea a little bit further by talking about the eternal nature of God. The Bible teaches that unlike every other being in the universe, God has no beginning and he has no end. Psalms 90 verse 2 says, before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who, is al who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Those two verses, like many, many other verses in the Bible, teaches us that God has always existed and always will exist. There are three basic ramifications of that teaching. First of all, it means that God is transcendent over time. In other words, God exists equally in all times and in all places. He's not limited to the process of time the same way that we are. We live in the present. We can't go back into the past and we can't advance into the future. We live at this particular moment. But the Bible teaches us that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He can see at all points of time all at once. And, and But the Bible's also clear that he acts in time. Even though he can see the whole span of time from beginning to end, God acts in time. In Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5, the Bible says, When the fullness of time had fully come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. There we see that at a very specific moment in time, at just the right time, in fact, God sent Jesus into the world. In fact, we can see every act that God does in the Bible is an action in time. So even though he himself is eternal, he acts in time. But time does not affect God the way it does us. We, as human beings, grow old. We wear out. Our bodies begin to dilapidate. But God stands outside of time. He's not changed or affected in any way by the passing of time. That's evidence in, in passages like Malachi 3, 6 that says, For I, the Lord, do not change. Because of his eternal nature, we can be certain that God will be faithful to his promises. His promises are steadfast and sure because they rest on an unchanging God who exists in, uh, uh, throughout all time and interacts with us in this world. It's good to know that we serve a God that's not bound by time and space. He is the eternal God, and he has created us for eternity. Next week, when we get back together, we're going to begin to talk about his omni attributes and looking further at the nature and the character of God. I hope to see you there. Thank you.